I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm welcoming Abbott Elementary Director Randall Einhorn to our Gold Derby Meet the Emmy Nominees TV Directors Panel. Randall, I didn't realize how impressive your resume was until I looked at you up on IMDb. Nurse Jackie, The Office, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, now 21 episodes of Abbott as its chief director. Um, does this gig ever get old? No, it really doesn't. You know, I'm, I feel very fortunate with what I get to do at work. I mean, I get to go to work and play with really brilliant people and have a giggle while doing it. I mean, that's often the hardest thing about our job is not laughing when you're not supposed to be. You got a, a lot of experience with the uh, mockumentary style as a director and cinematographer on, uh, on The Office. Um, how is working on Abbott uh, different or maybe it's not? I mean, the difference between, I think, doing The Office and Abbott is, you know, what we wanted the show to look like. Because I think we're talk we were talking about two different things. We're talking about the, the downturn of, of business and a struggling paper company, as opposed to, and the Abbott's obviously about a struggling underfunded inner city school. And really what we wanted it to look different, because these people are heroes. I mean, you, you, people drop off their kids and it, during the day and leave, leave them with these teachers and they hope they're doing a good job and they assume they are, but it's a, it's a, it's a, a really unrewarded job. And I think, you know, the way that we wanted to portray them is that they're doing something noble, doing something that most of us just don't have the energy to do. Now, I think uh, we talked about this briefly before we started. A lot of people would think that this mockumentary style would be easier than a conventional, say, monkey camera sitcom. Um, and that literally the opposite is true. Tell me why. Absolutely the opposite. It is so much easier to just frame a normal show because you could put a camera wherever you want. You could put it at the most optimal place. Whereas shooting a mockumentary, I can't always put it in the most optimal place, but I do think that in that, in that difficulty, there lies some opportunity for some really cool stuff that you find. And on The Office, we always said, what makes it harder actually makes it better. Um, but for instance, I, you know, it just seems to be, it, it is much more choreographed where the cameras move and how the, how the characters move. And there's a scene in the, the, ep the episode, The Party, um, where you, you, we're moving through a party with 35 people and we're a camera crew and a, and a focus puller and a, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a big machine and it takes a lot of choreography choreography and a lot of thought to be able to do that and it come out looking good. So it's just harder to find those beautiful frames. But I think once you do, it's so much more rewarding. Like I can, I can, you know, on a conventional show, you, you wouldn't, you're not actually quite often motivating the viewer, viewer to, to look around a corner or to duck under a blind so they could see the people kissing, which is a really fun thing to play with is, is you know, I'm always trying to activate the viewer as opposed to just entertain them. I want them to be hungry to see more. That's why when, you know, Gregory and Janine are, if anything secretive is happening, we just let that, we just play them on a really long lens and we step way back. And I think it kind of paints the, the scene with this veneer of authenticity that we're privy to something we shouldn't necessarily be privy to. And that's a really fun thing to play with. See, it's so interesting, Randall, because I would have thought that this style, the mockumentary style, is more free form and you could really just, you know, you, it didn't have the choreography, you didn't have to have things that, it, you know, you could just kind of, you know, estimate where things go. And it's literally the exacting nature of that, I'm sure is, is the precise opposite. It is the precise opposite. We can't put a camera where I would have seen a camera. I'll, I'll, we will never shoot something if we couldn't have shot it that way. And that started back on the office. I, was, I, I just, I just, that's the rules. If we couldn't have done this, then we won't do it. So you need to find out another way of doing it, which is challenging, but fun. How would you um, describe your working relationship with Quinta Brunson on the set? Um, working with Quinta on set is, it's a dream. I mean, I, I read the script and I liked the script very much, but then I'm at Quinta, I'm like, oh gosh, I've got to do this. <laughs> I want to do this with her. It, it's it's so so collaborative. I mean, there's no, there's no, nothing's precious, nothing's sacred. My goal every single day, I have two goals every day. I want Quinta to say, Randall, that's so stupid. Let's do that. 
And I want Shirley Ralph to call me baby. <laughs> and does that happen most days? It, it really does. I'm usually able to pitch something stupid enough that Quinta will say, Randall, that is so stupid. Let's do that. <laughs> it's pretty good. So this might answer this next question already, what you just said. I'm wondering if it gets easier or more comfortable to work with the cast and crew on a show the longer you're on it, or if you just start getting on each other's nerves more. I think it's both, um, but no, I, 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 it's it's definitely it's definitely easier to work with a crew that I mean, there's no reason I, other than you know, network television has we have a director, a new director each week just because you don't have the episodes ready. But I think it's easiest to just direct them all myself. Um, but I think it's also fun for people to play with other people. Um, the show is getting easier and easier to shoot, and for us together. And I know. You know, the thing is, you know, you know what what pitfalls there might be in in any scene with any any cast member or any crew. You're just always you're just much more aware, and you have this this shorthand and this language that's just fantastic. The third season finale uh, episode party that you earned your nomination for is just a hoot, um, and yet like so much of the show, uh, Randall, poignant. Uh, is it ever a challenge for you trying to emphasize the more serious, tender, you know, kind of genuine human moments of a show that's so dedicated to making us laugh at the same time? I mean, for me, it, and I think also for Quinta and the writers, that comes really easy because we're all kind of saps. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's those, those emotional moments, I think are what we're gonna keep the viewer coming back for. Um, it's not just the laughs, it's the emotional moments and you want to see what's happening them with them next week and the week after and the week after. So I think those emotional moments on the story is as if not more important than the jokes. Is it at all weird for you working or making a show that's no longer the hot newcomer, but merely, you know, one that's kind of settled in as a quality piece of work for the long haul? You know, when you're going when everyone's talking about you and it's like, wow, this Abbott is the greatest thing ever, you know, in season one and you're, you know, the fair haired boy and the new kid on the block. And now you're just, you know, one of the other shows, I'll be at the very quality show. Is it, is there a different vibe on the set? I mean, I, I don't think so because I think once we started shooting, literally once we started shooting the pilot, everything worked and every, we fit together and we all knew our place and we all knew how to feed off each other and to make the scenes as good as they could be. And it's, I'm not really thinking about what people are liking. I'm more thinking about what we're doing and the story we're telling. Um, I, I can, I could, I could go crazy trying to predict what people are going to respond to. I'm just trying to please myself. So, and that if if I have good taste, then other people might like it as well. But I think it's a, it's really hard to try to predict what people think and what they're going to respond to. I think you just need to be true to yourself and the story. Um, and the fact, I, I think now. Now that Abbott has grown in, we've, it's a very, it's in a very, very comfortable place. I think now is when the show can get even better. Besides, you know, with your impressive resume, besides being good at the job, is there a secret to consistently getting hired to direct in TV as you have over a long period of time? I mean, is there a psychology to being, you know, both the taskmaster and the best friend or anything like that? Um, I don't know. For me, directing, the most important thing I do is listen. Um, and I try, I try to be really attentive to what the writers are saying and attentive to what the cast is saying and the characters are saying and everybody gets it. I think it's, for me, it, it's, 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 it's opposite to the director should be the loudest voice on or the biggest voice on set. I think when they, they when we need to say something, of course we will be, but I think thinking about it and understanding what everybody's saying is for me, what's most important. And going in for a job interview, I think, um, it, that's that's paramount is you, you need to understand what people are talking about and there's no faking that either you do or don't we're going to wrap things there uh all three seasons of abc's abbott elementary stream over hulu uh randall einhorn best of luck at the forthcoming emmys in september and thanks for joining us at gold derby thank you so much